Hello, my name is Ronald Peters. I'm the medical director at Mind Body Medicine Center. Uh, I want to invite you to watch this webinar. It was developed by Dr. Edward Kondrat, a board certified ophthalmologist as well as a board certified homeopathic physician. It will give you many tools to understand how you can help to restore your vision. I hope you enjoy it. Welcome everyone. This is Dr. Edward Kondrat, and I certainly appreciate you taking time to watch the webinar called The New 10 Essentials to Save Your Sight. I thought it was important to give this webinar, webinar to kind of update you on some new things that I am doing and some important things that I feel can help you improve your vision and reverse visual problems that you may have. Uh, I have some special bonuses. If you finish the webinar with me, I'll be sending you a report called Vitamins May Backfire. And this is a very interesting study that showed that certain vitamins may actually double the risk of macular degeneration in a certain genotype. And I'll be talking more about that. Also, all of you that are uh, at this webinar will receive a free copy of my best-selling book, 10 Essentials to Save Your Sight. This is a very important book that's been an accumulation of my work over the last 10 years. And so I'm really grateful that um, you're interested in the book and I'll be sending you a copy. Also, uh, you'll also have an opportunity to have a complimentary consult to see what is the best treatment program for you. And I'll give you some information on that at the end of the webinar. Now, according to the American Academy of Ophthalmology, age-related diseases, including cataracts, diabetic retinopathy, glaucoma, are expected to dramatically increase from 28 million today to 43 million by the year 2020. So that's almost a doubling. So more and more people are beginning to ex uh, research things that they can do to help prevent this from occurring to them. So have you been told nothing can be done to improve your vision? Uh, just live with your poor vision or you to you need to give up your driver's license. Well, if you've been told any of these things, then you're at the right place because these are the kind of people that I see. People that have been abandoned by traditional ophthalmology are just at, at their rope's end and they're looking for something to either preserve the vision that they have or believe it or not, in many cases, improve their vision. As we get older, we're worried about passing that driver's test, a vision exam for your driver's license. You know, when we're teenagers, we can't wait to get our wheels, then we get in our 60s and we're scared to death that we may have to give up our driver's license. Well, I'm turning 65 this year, and even though I think my vision's good, I got to go to the DMV and take my vision test. So I'm a little anxious, just like many of you are. And of course, as we get older, we want to spend more time with our family and our grandchildren. I have five sons and I'm still waiting for grandchildren. So if any of you out there have granddaughters or daughters that are single, let me know. Hopefully one of these days I'll have the experience, the joy of having grandchildren. I guess I really don't have to say much about the problems with our health care. Uh, big Pharma, Insurance and Politics, and all of these organizations, I think, really don't have your best interest at heart. Uh, they're into making money, and unfortunately, I think our present healthcare system is a disaster. And that's probably one of the reasons why I'm seeing more and more patients. They want to be in charge of their health. They want to explore these alternative treatments and improve their health and improve their vision. Uh, many of you that I've spoken to are getting injections for surgery and you're deathly afraid of them and you have a good reason to be afraid of injections. There's a dark side to these injections and I published a report called the Watergate of Eye Care. There's been manipulation of study data, systemic side effects, ocular side effects, and payoff and bribes. Uh, let's look at serious systemic effects. By systemic effects, I'm talking about 
cardiovascular stroke, heart attacks, uh, major infections. So one or more serious systemic infections occurred in about 21.5% of patients. My goodness, that's one in five will get a serious systemic effect, according to the CAT study. Recently, at the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia, they looked at patients undergoing this two-year study and found that after two years, atrophy had developed in 18.3% of the patients. Atrophy is death of tissue. You have dysfunction, then you have death, then you have atrophy. So these injections can lead to a serious complication. So those of you that are getting injections, I would be very cautious on how many injections you get and make sure the doctor talks to you about side effects. Now, I wanna make some one thing clear that I wear two hats. I'm a board certified ophthalmologist and a homeopathic doctor and I want, I want what's best for you. I do have some patients that do require injections, but the majority of patients I think will do just fine with alternative treatments to improve their health. So we have a battle out there, homeopathy versus allopathy. Homeopathy has an approach that the body can heal itself. Allopathic doctors feel that the body cannot heal itself and we have to give these toxic petrochemical pharmaceutical products or do surgery. My conversion, I was a board certified ophthalmologist and practiced eye surgery for 20 years. I felt that there wasn't any eye disease that I couldn't cut and repair it with surgery. Then when homeopathy cured me of my severe asthma, I began to look seriously at alternative treatments. And I've been integrating alternative therapy since 1990 in my practice. I'm the only eye doctor to be certified in ophthalmology and homeopathy. I'm the author of three best-selling books, host of Healthy Vision Talk Radio. I have a medical license in four states. I'm the past president of the Arizona Homeopathic and Integrative Medical Association, and I'm the clinic director of the American Medical College of Homeopathy. My program, and the Chondra program is one of them, can improve your vision. 85% of patients who complete this program have an improvement. And the success of this program was featured on Martin Sheen's In Focus, a national public television program. But once again, this program is not for everyone. I think it's only for those who are very serious in investing, investing in saving their sight. Martin Sheen is In Focus production uh, was a thrill for me to be featured on this national TV show. And uh, they interviewed patients that had, had gone through my program, patients who were abandoned by traditional ophthalmology and had a phenomenal return of their vision. Martin Sheen and I have a connection. He starred in a movie called The Way. And he played the role of an ophthalmologist who lost his son and discovered that his son died doing the Camino de Santiago. And it's a wonderful movie, uh, a very enjoyable movie. So I would encourage you to watch the movie The Way. When I found out about the Camino de Santiago, my wife and I did the Camino. It's a 500 mile pilgrimage through Northern Spain. And we did this to raise awareness for patients with macular degeneration. My wife kept a wonderful blog, a very entertaining blog every day. And I said to her, uh, honey, you should probably put this in a book. Uh, you're welcome to go to healingtheeye.com forward slash Camino, C-A-M-I-N-O in small cases, small case letters, and you can read about our adventure. And I want to thank all of you that contributed uh, money to our cause. All of it went to a nonprofit organization, the Restore Eye Foundation, to help people with visual problems. Uh, my um, work has also recently been published in a peer review journal. I reported on 152 patients who underwent the therapies that I'm going to be discussing with you. So let's talk about the 10 essentials. And I know a lot of you, I heard this before, Dr. Condra, can't you talk about something else besides diet? Well, I think that probably diet is the most important thing. We try to 
educate you that 70% of your diet should be organic, raw, or living. Well, why organic? There was a study done that looked at spinach in the 1940s. The average serving of spinach had 158 milligrams of iron. More recently, that study was repeated, and the levels of iron went from 158 to 2.2. Our food may look good, but it is nutritionally deficient. There was also a study done in Chicago that looked at this idea of organic versus non-organic and the organic fruits and vegetables had five to tenfold more nutrition and five to tenfold less toxic material. So there's two benefits of eating organic. One, you're getting less in the way of heavy metals and toxins and you're getting far more nutrition, five to tenfold more nutrition. Why raw or living food? This is my good friend, Sal Montesinos, who lives in Naples. Excellent book on raw alkaline cuisine. Heat destroys the delicate protein structure. There's a loss of amino acids, and loss of digestive enzymes. So you should try to eat as much raw food, raw fruits and vegetables as possible. Um, there's dangers of genetically modified organisms or food. A great book. Seeds of Deception talks about this problem. This is another reason why to eat organic. If you're eating organic, chances are that it is not genetically modified. Avoid corn and high fructose corn syrup. I've traveled throughout Europe. I've done some research in Rome and the European countries just do not have the high fructose corn syrup. They have natural sugar. In fact, most of the European countries have banned genetically modified food. For some reason, we're embracing it. There are problems with high fructose corn syrup. Uh, some alternative doctors feel that high fructose corn syrup really is not a true form of sugar. It's uh, metabolized more towards fat storage, and it has trace levels of mercury. And in addition, most of it is made from genetically modified corn. This was a shock to me, that fish oils might be contributing to your eye problems. There's a great book called The Fundamentals to Understanding uh, That Fish Oil is the Wrong Choice. Professor Peskin and Robert Rowan wrote this book, and they feel strongly that your eye does need, your eye and heart, they, they do need omega oils, but it should be in plant-based oils, not animal-based oils. So. Do not tell your doctor that Dr. Kondrat said that you should avoid omega oils. You need omega oils for your eye, but they should be in plant-based form. Fish oils have a longer chain fatty acid, which are not absorbed by the cell. They become rancid at room temperature, very toxic to the body, and there are levels of mercury. So for these reasons, you have to avoid them. I have found that 80% of patients that I see are deficient in zinc, even if they're taking zinc. Well, zinc is essential for every enzymatic reaction in your, in your body. Studies have been done to show that zinc deficiency is linked to eye disease. So everyone needs to be tested for their zinc. There's a very simple zinc test called the zinc tally test or zinc taste test. It can be done in 10 seconds. And many people I see are deficient in zinc and you need to take zinc supplementation. Now, this really is something that has changed the way I practice. Vitamins may backfire. 13% of patients have a certain genotype, which doubles the progression of macular degeneration with certain vitamins. That is really scary. Um, when I took the Hippocratic Oath, the first part of it was do no harm. So now I really have to, I'm concerned that the very vitamins I may be recommending could actually be doubling the risk of macular degeneration with certain patients. The landmark study called the ARED study was done, which clearly showed that antioxidants, the left column, have a 17% reduction risk of macular. When you take zinc oxide, there's a 21% risk. And com both of them combine 25. So this study indicates, hey, if you got early macular degeneration, 
or there's a family history, you got to take nutri nutritional supplements. But a study was done to looking at patients with a certain genotype, a high CFH uh, complement fixation factor and a low ARMS2 who made up 13% of this national study. The risk for progression to advanced macular degeneration within seven years was 135% higher if they were in a supplement group. So what does that mean? Well, one person's medicine is another person's poison. So we believe that you should be tested, you should have genetic testing, you should also have electrodermal screening, which is another way to measure your body's response. Second area is proper hydration. Dr. Bat Mangeldi wrote a book called Your Body's Many Cries for Water, and he feels that many causes of chronic disease is due to the fact that you're just dehydrated. So you need to drink more water, and our rule of thumb is one half your body weight in ounces of water. So the problem is where do you find a good source of water? We know that there's dangers of public water. Pharmaceuticals are now found in water, and there's also dangers in plastic bottles, the plastics and the phthalates. So I'm in our office now, we use a device called pH prescription. This is a purifying system that makes the water alkaline. And here's the web address, phprescription.com. Or I'm a big advocate of reverse osmosis. Reverse osmosis is a device that can go underneath your kitchen sink. And this is a great way to make the best quality water possible. Point three is balance the autonomic nervous system. There's a fight or flight system and the body will not heal if you're in a sympathetic state. The sympathetic state is when you have anxiety, fear, and you're running from uh, as something that is threatening your body. Unfortunately, a lot of doctors put you in that sympathetic state. If you don't take these eye drops, you're going to lose your vision. Uh, if you don't have the surgery, you're going to go blind. So we need to have ways to reduce stress. And I have found over the years, if you are not able to reduce stress, probably many of the treatments that I'm going to be talking about are not going to work effectively. So physical exercise reduces stress. I like to take a run every morning, meditation, prayer, positive affirmations, and we do have microcurrent stress therapies and light therapies, which can quickly balance the body and reduce stress. And one of my favorites is whole body exercise. Trampoline or rebounder is nice because as we get older, um, we may not be able to take the stress on our joints for running or cycling, but a rebounder or a trampoline is a good way. And of course, dancing. Uh, gentlemen, take your ladies out on a dance floor. It's a good form of exercise. And dance is a way to help you get uh, some kin kinesthetic awareness, helping your body uh, be adjusted to your environment. It's a wonderful way of getting exercise. Now that we did our exercise, we need sleep. And sleep is very important for our, our bodies to regenerate. I'm going to talk a little bit about light at night an ultraviolet light friend or foe. There was a study done by Professor Abraham Hyam, and I've interviewed him a couple of times on my radio show, where he felt that unwanted light at night is contributing to cancer, prostate cancer, breast cancer, diabetes, heart disease, and eye disease. So he had this theory that there's an increase. So what he did is he took it into uh, the laboratory and he injected mice uh, with uh, breast cancer cells, prostate cancer, and studied the effects of light on them at night. And he found that animals that had a long exposure of light at night had a dramatic increase in the incidence of the growth of their breast cancer, prostate, a higher incidence in diabetes and macular degeneration, etc. So, I thought that this was a really good study. It was uh, randomized and controlled, but he took it one step further. He then wanted to look at what wavelength of light at night would cause the greatest harm. He looked at blue, green, yellow, red, orange, 
and uh, the light that had the greatest negative effect is blue. So our body needs blue light during the day, but at night we have to avoid blue light. And unfortunately, uh, we are exposed to too much blue light at night. There's something on the right there called a compact fluorescent light, which admits a blue wavelength of light. We really need to go back to the incandescent light. So what our federal government is recommending in terms of these compact fluorescent lights are not very healthy for our bodies. So avoid blue light at night. There was a study done uh, demonstrating that patients who uh, took melatonin and slept in a totally dark room. These are patients that had macular degeneration. The more, majority of them had a reduction in their pathological macular changes. So getting a good night's sleep in a dark room is something you need to all consider to help reduce the progression of macular degeneration. Vitamin D is in the news. I believe that the reason why we're all deficient in vitamin D, we're not getting enough ultraviolet light. I feel that ultraviolet light, lack of ultraviolet light might be a cause of macular degeneration. There was a study done at Will's Eye Hospital in Philadelphia, and they showed that rabbit retinal pigment epithelium will not regenerate without low levels of ultraviolet light. A study that most ophthalmologists quote is a study published in the American Journal of Ophthalmology, and this is done with monkeys who had cataract surgery. And when you have cataract surgery, the lens is removed from your eye, which normally protects you from high doses of ultraviolet light. They had dilating drops put in their eye. These dilating drops open the pupil. And you know when you go outside, your pupil gets smaller to protect your eyes from unwanted ultraviolet light. They also had a lid speculum device that was inserted in their eyes so they could not squint and their head was strapped to the chair. 16 minutes, they were exposed to a 10,000 watt xenon arc lamp. Then the eyes were sacrificed and the researchers said, oh my goodness, ultraviolet light causes damage. This is a ridiculous study. And Professor Ott, who's a big advocate of ultraviolet light states, it's much like putting a group of humans in a blast furnace and they come out burned and the conclusion is heat is bad for the body. I'm not saying you spend all day outside in the ultraviolet light, but you do need a moderate amount in order to maintain good health. Um, vision is more than acuity and we need to look at function. Many of you have heard of Dr. Bates. He was a turn of the century ophthalmologist who felt that all eye disease was caused by stress. And he advocated palming and sunning. And um, we used to make fun of Dr. Bates when I was doing my ophthalmology training. Then I read a book by Algis Huxley, the great science fiction writer, philosopher, called The Art of Seeing. Huxley had extremely poor vision during his life. And he went from clinic to clinic trying to improve his vision. And when he heard about Dr. Bates, he began doing his exercises and techniques, and he dramatically improved his vision. So the book called The Art of Seeing is Huxley's dedication to Bates. Palming is a wonderful exercise. As I mentioned earlier, meditation, anything you do to relax your body is good. Palming is one of those ways. You cover each eye with the palm of your hand, do some nice, deep, slow breathing, close your eyes, and it helps your eye muscles to relax. In addition, your hands are kind of an electrocurrent generator. So when you put your palm over your eye, you're giving your body a low level of microcurrent. Sunning was something I really didn't understand. Uh, Dr. Bates advocated this. On the right is my friend, Mayor Schneider, who's a Bates educator, and he advocates sunning, looking at the sun when the sun is setting. Well, Bates was right. There was a study done that looked at low-level laser therapy in patients with macular degeneration. The majority of them had an improvement. And the laser that they used was a red infrared. And when the sun is setting on the horizon, it gives off a red infrared pattern. So we're using a device called a delta laser, which delivers this exact 
wavelength of light that not only helps stimulate the eye, you can put it on your neck to stimulate oxygenation of the carotids and on the bones of your body to stimulate stem cells. So there's a three fold purpose with this light. Uh, and this device has uh, all of these modalities in one. It has the pulse electromagnetic field. It has syntonic light. So uh, if you're interested, give the office a call. Earthing is another important way uh, to help our bodies heal and regenerate. This is a book written by Stephen Sinatra. He felt that this is one of the greatest discoveries of his life. Simply by taking off your shoes and socks and walking barefoot, your body is grounded and you're receiving the electromagnetic energy of the earth, which can be regenerative. And he has documented hundreds of cases simply by grounding people with chronic uh, conditions completely healed. Who was the first homeopath? Now, of course, most people will say Samuel Hahnemann, but it was actually Moses. Exodus 23:20. And he took the calf which they had made, burnt it in the fire, ground it into powder, and stood it upon the water and made the children of Israel drink it. Well, this is how we make our homeopathic remedies. We burn it, we grind it into powder, we put it in water and we drink it. And the interesting part here is that the calf was made from gold and, and gold is a good homeopathic remedy uh, to help treat depression and despair. So in homeopathy, we believe the body has a wisdom and um, that when you do get a disease or a symptom, it's because the body needs this disease or symptom to maintain homeostasis. So in homeopathy, we actually give you a substance which helps your body do what it's trying to do. So when I had severe asthma, I was given a homeopathic remedy that actually causes asthma. A homeopathic doctor treats diarrhea by giving you a remedy or a substance which causes diarrhea. Now that may seem peculiar, but if you do believe that the body is made in the likeness of God, the body should be intelligent and our reactions that occur are because we need them. So homeopathy respects the wisdom of the body. So a substance that causes a symptom in a healthy person will cure this symptom in a diseased state. For example, belladonna produces a fever, redness of the face and a throbbing headache. So if a patient comes in with a fever, redness of the face and throbbing headache, we give them homeopathic belladonna. There's a bumblebee on the top right. You get bit by a bumblebee, you have redness, swelling and burning. Well, if you have redness and swelling and burning of your eye, you're given homeopathic bumblebee. Uh, the onion, when you're peeling an onion, your eyes water. So watering eyes, we may treat you with a homeopathic onion. A rattlesnake bite, you have a lot of bleeding. And the rattlesnake remedies are very good for treating hemorrhage, especially hemorrhage in the eye. So this approach has been going on for over 200 years. And some of my most amazing cures have been due to homeopathy. Also in homeopathy, we just, we don't only look at your eye problem, we look at other diseases and other physical problems. And we look at your mental and emotional state. So we truly treat you. So if I look at a hundred patients, probably with, let's say a hundred patients with macular degeneration, each one will probably need a different homeopathic remedy. I got interested in microcurrent. There's a photograph of myself and Sam Sneed many years ago. I treated him for macular degeneration and in exchange, he gave me some golf lessons. And there's a, on the right, there's Sam and I on the golf course. Of course, I, I think I helped, I helped Sam more than he helped me. I don't think anybody could do a thing to help me with my golf game. He finally came up to me and said, Dr. Condrod, here's what I want you to do. Just cut back over a year and just give the game up. So I followed Sam's advice. I probably haven't been golfing now for well over five years. I believe in synchronicity. The New York Times Magazine on May 25th, my birthday, 
this year or last year was dedicated to microcurrent. I think that the general public medicine is beginning to recognize microcurrent. Microcurrent improves blood flow, stimulates cellular activity, removes scar tissue, reduces inflammation, and has a neuroprotective effect. All of these things can benefit your eye, whether you have cataracts, glaucoma, or macular degeneration. Lance Armstrong on the left, in addition to blood doping, his cycling team routinely used microcurrent. A few years ago, I ran the Marine Corps Marathon, and uh, microcurrent helped me uh, regain all my muscular st strength. I was in bad shape after running 26.2 miles, and a 30-minute treatment of microcurrent reduced all the inflammation, and it was just a dramatic change in my body. The thing, same thing can happen to your eye. We began by using microcurrent with the MicroStim 100. This is a device that we treated uh, eight points around the eye using acupuncture points. Uh, we later discovered this frequency specific that by changing the frequency of the microcurrent, we are able to get a much better effect. Kind of like when you have two tuning forks, if they both vibrate C sharp, you're going to have a harmony. So now we use the Inspirstar device, which is a programmable device giving you specific frequencies. And this device is much like homeopathy. We're giving you specific frequencies depending on your type of eye problem. And it's delivered simply by a uh, electroconductive glove wrapped in a washcloth that goes over your eye. The treatments are very simple and painless and they, patients uh, uh, have a dramatic improvement of their vision. The big question is, why is it that the microcurrent machines are so expensive? Why do I have to pay over $2,000 when I can get one on eBay for 70 or 80? Well, the microcurrent machines on eBay are not microcurrent. They're TENS machines. The TENS machine delivers thousands of a microamp or milliamps. We need a very low level of current. Dr. Cheng's research indicated that if the current goes above 500 microamps, there is actually a decrease in cellular activity. So we want to keep the current at a very low level. So I would caution you, do not buy these machines and treat your eye. They can cause harm. They can cause decrease in cellular activity. Make sure you're doing microcurrent under the supervision of an eye doctor or an integrative doctor that's changed, that's trained. We also have body treatments with the microcurrent. Uh, we treat the area over the liver and the kidneys for detoxification, and we have wonderful treatments for reducing stress. Sometimes just by holding the gloves and running the current, you can have a nice reduction of stress. These are some of the studies, recent studies that have been published in the literature showing that microcurrent can help eye problems. Uh, I published a paper in 2002. That was my first paper dealing with microcurrent. And as I mentioned, uh, I, uh, a paper publication was accepted for publication in Alternative Medicine and Health and Disease, which will be coming out this year. There were studies dealing with microcurrent and retinitis pigmentosa and in glaucoma. I'm happy that I'm involved in a research project at the University of Rome. Professor Matteo Russo and Professor Marcella Nebioso are interested in studying the effects of microcurrent on an animal model of macular degeneration. So I'm hoping that this research will lead to much more acceptance of microcurrent in the treatment of eye disease. We also do specialized therapies, chelation and oxidative treatments. This is a big problem. You can see this is a urine test and the PB there with that bar is lead. The majority of patients that I see either have elevated lead or mercury, and you need to get the lead out. Heavy metals are a contributing factor in all chronic disease. We do a six hour urine test, which adequately measures your urine levels of heavy metals. And then we can give you recommendations on the proper treatment. The major treatment that we recommend is chelation. There was a national study done called the TAC study, trial to assess chelation therapy. It was a 10-year 
$31 million National Institute of Health study. The end of the 10-year study, it demonstrated that heart disease was improved by 26%, diabetic heart disease improved 39, heart attacks improved 23. They really didn't look at eye disease, but my feeling is that if it improves the cardiovascular system for the heart, it is going to improve the vascular system for the eye. And in my experience, every patient that undergoes chelation therapy will have some improvement of their vision. Oxidative treatment is another treatment that we do. This uses a highly reactive form of oxygen called ozone. There's different ways of delivering it. Uh, we can mix it with blood. We can do rectal insufflation where you insert a small amount of the gas rectally. We use eye drops, hydrogen peroxide, or ultraviolet light. Oxidative therapies are a wonderful way of stimulating regeneration in the body. I was a featured speaker at the World Ozone Congress in Italy. There were 72 nations represented. Uh, over 100 different papers were presented on the benefit of oxidative therapies. But for some reason, our Food and Drug Administration states that ozone is dangerous and should not be done. Many of, much of the work with ozone and eye disease was done in Cuba. There's a Dr. Sylvia Mendez uh, who's done, who's treated thousands of patients and has shown a dramatic improvement of acuity, vision, and a reduction in intraocular pressure with ozone treatment. Last, I briefly want to talk about stem cells. I've been researching stem cells in the eye. I've traveled to Europe to the major uh, stem cell center called Excel, but I've been very disappointed in the effects of stem cells in eye disease. Um, stem cells can have a dramatic effect on arthritic conditions, arth uh, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, cerebral vascular strokes, etc. But for some reason, there just hasn't been any good studies or good results in treating eye disease. But this is really interesting, that researchers have found that microcurrent produces a signal that can generate stem cells, and the same thing with light therapy. So we may be doing therapies that are stimulating your body's own stem cells, and I think that's one of the benefits of microcurrent and light therapy. Most of the doctors that do stem cells will first eliminate all inflammation in your body and infections, help improve oxygenation, and eliminate heavy metals. But I think if you do these three things, the majority of problems that you have will improve on their own. I think when you have inflammation, poor oxygenation, heavy metals, that prevents your body's own stem cells from helping your body to regenerate. Now, the program that I mentioned earlier is called the Chondra program. This is a one-year program beginning with a three-day boot camp to restore your vision. The program lasts for a year, and we'd like you to come back in six months to have a repeat boot camp. And this program uh, includes a microcurrent device. It includes an ozone generator. It is essentially everything that you need for one year. This program is now available throughout the United States by trained integrative doctors. I've trained about 20 doctors, and you can go to my website to find out more information. They're trained not only in the United States, but Puerto Rico in Australia. So I want to thank you for listening to this webinar. I have uh, special bonuses. All of you will get a free report, Why Vitamins Might Backfire report. And you'll also get a free copy of my best-selling book, 10 Essentials to Save Your Sight. Both of these reports, no obligation. I want to give you this information so you can take the steps to improve your health and vision. So these two bonuses are free when you fill out a non-obligation application for a free consult to find out the best program for you. So you will get the Why Vitamins Might Backfire report and the 10 Essentials to Save Your Sight book. So don't delay. Uh, this offer will expire in one week. 
You can claim your two bonuses by filling out your qualifying application for a free consult with our program coordinator and she'll talk to you to find out the best treatment program for you. So it's very simple. So um, it was a real pleasure for me sharing all this information for you. Uh, don't delay, fill out the application to get your two free bonuses. That's the special report on vitamins that may backfire. And also my best-selling book, The 10 Essentials to Save Your Sight. And um, I look forward to uh, you having a free consultation so you can be guided as to the best program for you. Hello, thank you for watching. I hope you found this useful. If you fill out the form, we'll be happy to send you more information about what you can do to improve your eye health.